Thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. Is the VA going to lowball you with your rating decision, with your award? Listen, it's quite possible. And what you need to do is you need to prepare yourself to be able to file the claim appropriately and be able to articulate all the information that the VA needs in order to give you the correct rating. Otherwise, you have a tremendous chance at getting lowballed. I've done videos like this in the past, and I just want to make sure that people are getting the message because, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 views on a video means that only 3,000 veterans are getting this information when there's 16.5 million veterans in the U.S. and uh, less than 30% are accessing the VA uh, for compensation and pension. So getting this information out there is vital. So please hit that thumbs up for me. It doesn't cost you a nickel and it helps to spread the word. Uh, same thing with a subscription. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and it just helps YouTube realize what's going on uh, with this and helps push it out. Comments are welcome. I appreciate them all. So with this going into this here, um, the VA will absolutely lowball you if you aren't providing them the correct information. And now what I mean by that is we would think that, you know, if I tell the VA that I have a condition, number one, you would think the VA has a bunch of doctors. They will diagnose me. They will, they will see me through this and help me. The answer is no. They're not going to do any of that. You need to go on your own, get your own documentation as far as your diagnosis is concerned, and provide that to the VA. That's step one. Otherwise, they're just going to get denied service connection. So you need to submit a diagnosis. That's number one, to avoid the denial up front. Number two is for every condition. Now, there's some conditions that only have one rating. Okay, so like tinnitus, for example, 10%, that's it. You either have it or you don't. You get a 10% or you don't. So there's some ratings that are like that. But for the most part, ratings um, for conditions will have several ratings. Sometimes there's three, sometimes there's four, sometimes there's five different ratings that could be associated with that specific condition. So, for example, migraines max out at a 50%. You can get a 10%, a 30%, or a 50%. Okay, so super important to know. Same thing with GERD, right? So GERD has a maximum of 60%. You can get a 10, a 30, or a 60. Big differences between those, right? So how does the VA know what they should rate you at, right? So here you are, you submitted your diagnosis, you submitted the fact that you have that condition, and now the VA has it, and you're sitting there with your fingers crossed wondering what my rating's going to be. You shouldn't have to wonder. You should know what your rating is based on your own signs, symptoms, durations, all of that good stuff, and you can. You can, and you actually have control over this because you can go into the schedule of ratings, which I will post in this video in the description below. Go into the VA's schedule of ratings. In that schedule of ratings, what it's going to do is it's going to tell you if you have this condition and you meet this criteria, reading it, and you're the patient, you know. If, if anybody asks you, do you have this, 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 this associated with your condition, you, you're going to be able to say, no, I don't. I'm, I'm missing that and that. Or, yeah, I meet all of those. And guess what? If you meet everything for a specific rating, that's the rating that you should get. Not lower. You should get the one that's, that's rated to that. But what happens is we don't go into this prepared. So, one, we don't provide that information up front. We just simply say, I have this condition. Here you go. Rate me. So that's the first mistake. You need to be having the conversations with your doctor that outline that you have all of these signs and symptoms for that specific condition. And I'm telling you, you miss one word, one symptom, and it will bump you down into a lower rating, thus lowballing you because you forgot to mention one word. Okay. A great example here is GERD. So if somebody walks in and they get diagnosed for GERD, right? And the doctor, you know, does all that stuff. You submit all your paperwork. And really all it says is, yeah, you have GERD. And the VA gets it. Now they're going to send you to a CMP examiner. That CMP examiner is going to sit across from you and have a conversation. In that conversation, somewhere in there, in some way, form, shape, fashion, whatever, they're going to ask you, what are your signs and symptoms of this condition GERD? And you're going to say, well, it's, you know, it's really bad heartburn. Don't know what else to tell you. 
and maybe they might pry a little bit. Maybe you might throw on another word. You know, sometimes I kind of throw up a little bit in my mouth and that's kind of it. And that's all you say. And you don't think about anything else that's associated with it. And it's not that you don't have the other things that are associated with it. You just don't either relate it, you don't think about it, you didn't really think about it. And so you're just giving the kind of the things off the top of your head, not realizing the consequence of only giving them a small snippet. Okay. The reality is, is that if you went into the schedule of ratings and you read of them, you would see that it has a whole list of things for GERD. Difficulty swallowing. Well, guess what? When you have a battle with GERD and you're choking on hot lava, try swallowing. Yes, you have difficulty swallowing. Two, you, you have vomit before. Three, you have regurgitation. And like in my mind, right, how the heck are you going to know to differentiate between regurgitation and vomit? Okay, it doesn't say projectile, you know, shooting out of your face, right? It just says vomit. So vomit and regurgitation kind of almost feel the same sometimes, right? So how do you know to mention both? You don't, unless you actually read the damn thing. So read it. And if you read it, like I said, you would know that vomit, regurgitation, difficulty swallowing, esophageal distress, pain in your esophagus uh, area, your, your abdomen area, pain that shoots up into your shoulder, arm, almost feels like you're having a heart attack, and that it could cause... Um, it has the potential of causing severe, um, you know, uh, medical problems for you, which would be cancer in the esophagus, right? So if you were able to say all of those things, well, now you're looking at a 30% and even potentially, uh, up to a 60%, um, I think there might be blood in the stool or weight loss or something like that, that might be added in there. But the, the whole point is, is that 10% or 30%, a potential of 60%, right? If you read everything, right? So... It's very, very, very important in order to not be lowballed for your condition to read the schedule of ratings, understand what they're looking for, and if you meet those, then you better be having those conversations with your doctor and taking it with you to the CMP examiner. Now, when you take it to the CMP examiner, I, I personally, I literally mean take it with you to the CMP examiner. Print it out. Write it down. Do something. So you can take it with you and in that conversation, you can articulate it. You could read off of it. You can make sure you don't miss one of those things. And then you can actually hand it to the CMP examiner and go, here you go. Now that CMP examiner can then just file it along with everything they're sending back to the VA or they could sit there and type it in, right? They could look and they could type and write, you know, everything in there, uh, you know, because you want to make sure that you're not missing anything. Some of these CMP examiners are contractors that contract civilian providers that contract to the VA. Other CMP examiners are VA employees. doesn't really matter which one they are. Look, people are people. Tell them, hey, look, I want to make sure that I'm getting all of this stuff uh, documented in here uh, so I can make sure that the VA has all of the information they need. You know, here, here you go. And they should. So that will help ensure that you are getting the appropriate rating because the worst thing that can happen is that you're sitting there wondering, not knowing, you're guessing. What, what are they looking for? You know, oh, it really disrupts my life. Cool. It doesn't say disrupts life in the schedule of ratings for this condition. So it doesn't really matter that you said that. Why does it? Why? 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 Well, because I'm throwing up in my mouth. I have difficulty swallowing. I'm vomiting. I've lost weight. I have pain in my esophagus. I pain shooting through my shoulder. You know, I can't, you know, I can't sleep. I have to sleep on 14 pillows. So I'm sitting up, right? For those that know, because that's just, it's horrible. So in any case, I just want to make sure that you are not getting low bald and what you can do to prevent it. So with that, I'll go ahead and conclude it. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please like, subscribe, share with a friend, comment below, all that good stuff. I'm, I'm really trying to get out a good five videos a week or so um, to you guys. Some of it's regurgitation of information um, to maybe from a different angle. Maybe if somebody missed it, uh, because, you know, there's, again, there's 16.5 million of us and we need to get this word out because, look, let, let's be frank. The military does a great job getting us in. They do a pretty crappy job getting us out and prepared for the VA and the civilian sector, right? So it's upon, it, we got to take this upon ourselves and carry this load and uh, help each other out. So if you stuck on for that piece, thanks. All right. Appreciate everybody. 
And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.